my name is Greg Souza. And my name is Safathia Romeo Taken. I'm a bartender and run a bar called the Crow's Nest in Gloucester and have been for over 30 years. I'm the mayor of the city of Gloucester. I've been mayor for three years, but in a city councilor for 13 prior. Bars like this bar, which I refer to as a neighborhood, <laughs> waterfront, working man, blue collar dive bar. So, I mean, every day is a new day. Every day we're working together. Every day this office is going crazy. probably 20 or more of these um, in the late 60s through the 70s. Uh, very different, very different than now. Dinosaurs, that's for sure. Um, I'm not sure if it's good to be the last dinosaur or not. Uh, <laughs> there's only a couple of bars like this left in town where, where the real regulars, the last of these, the last of them, the last of us, still still come and go. Um, other places, I'm sure, are completely, you know, they might as well not even be open. And they are. A lot of places aren't open in the winter because what's the point? You know, there's nobody there. Oh, I love it when you leave me. I love you more the days you don't. In the morning, will you forget me? All Almost coincidentally, that time, uh, the movie of Perfect Stone came out in 2000, and that was the around the time that it's, things really there seemed to be shifting. From, for me, for instance, my year-round business was, was si very similar. Same station. guys, super regulars all the time, guys that worked all around now the waterfront, whether they're fishermen, three. truckers, guys that just work on the wharf, the machine shops, to she more says, and more uh, oh, summer-based tourist you. people. Love you more the days you don't. But in the morning, you come with me. I hoped you would, but I bet you won't. For instance, in 1988 or 1990, my I, business wasn't a lot different in January than it was in August. Uh, that's not the case now at all. It's way different now. Roughly 2000 to now, which is 17 years, it's really started to tilt to a tourist type town. To my blues, wash away. By that time, oh, I'll be old and gray. My administration, for the first time ever, we put a line item in the budget. So at least um, $130,000 is going right towards tourism and going to um, that. We gave a line item, I believe it's like 30% goes directly back to the tourism. Um, the hotel did increase. It did bring more people in. Um, but I think that um, the awareness of Gloucester, the outreach we've been doing, Discover Gloucester, our tourism uh, people that really, we had no commission that was active, but they were really active, it's, it's some of the people. We have a great community. We have a, a balance of diversity in Gloucester that's amazing. Growing up, uh, I mean, I was spoiled, I guess, because I think me and my friends just had a better life than some of the kids now. I mean, I know it's great to have technology and social media and everything else, but I was out there. We were outside with the neighborhood. There was always a lot of thieving when I was a kid. Um, I mean, the neighborhood I grew up in, I was fascinated. My house, my mother's house was never robbed, but every other house in the neighborhood was, um, just coincidentally, luckily. We knew who lived in our neighborhoods. I miss that for my grandkids, you know? We knew, unless you live in a, a cul-de-sac, you know, um, then you don't have a neighborhood, and that's not fair. We lived in the inner city. None of us had cul-de-sacs. We we grew up running in and out of the churchyard. We called it. But uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't think crime like that's on the rise any 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 more than it ever was. The stuff I knew about, especially as a kid, was all drug based. The guys were stealing money to get drugs. You know, that's what they were doing. I'm sure that's the way it is all across the country. The same. We were, you know, we're not any different that way. Everyone knew each other, and everyone, you know, you. you 
you knew that if something happened, you can run into someone else's parents' house, or if, if you had to even go to the restroom, or whatever you had to do. And, and everyone seemed like we all ate at the same time. It was so cool. It's like, okay, we're all going to eat. I'll see you in about an hour. And we all come back out for the night. You know, it was just amazing, the things we do. I like it. I mean, I like that it. it felt more real to me always than some picture postcard town. You know, this is... You know, there's good, there's a lot of great and, and beauty here, but there's a hard underbelly. There just is. The homeless situation is certainly way, way more prevalent than it was ever that I've seen. But way more, just the last few years particularly. Again, I'm somewhat biased because the homeless shelter in Gloucester is right down the street from here. So I see everybody streaming by in the morning. Um, you know, some of the people I actually know that are Gloucester people I grew up with even. I've talked to homeless people and I've known I've let them live in my woods, believe it or not, in back of my house so they wouldn't be bothered. During the summer I have some of the transits that come. You know, it's the same as every place else in the country, expensive housing. Um, people not able to find jobs where they can't even come close to making the money to house themselves. So you've got a huge problem that way. Um, as a kid, I don't remember any homeless people. There were a few what we referred to, people referred to as bums around town, but that wasn't, it was not similar to this, you know. I call them my friends, not homeless, but my friends who are here all the time at the Gray Center, and some of them are dropping their needles, and you're going to get blamed for it. Can we educate them on what to do? Because that's my biggest problem. It's not that all homeless people are drag addicts. No, it's not that. But we have more um, needles in the summer than we ever do. I was kind of surprised when I first came into internship, really what it details everything. It sounds so easy, but believe me, unless you have the right team, it's very complex. I'm Chris Garanza. I'm Director of Communications and Constituent Services, Executive Staff here for the Office of the Mayor for Mayor Safatia Romeo Taken. I think Gloucester is very much a place where you think of the storied heritage, you think of the storied history, um, especially as it relates to the maritime economy, and that's certainly true today, but I also think that you see a certain change with the younger generation that recognizes that they don't want to necessarily end up where maybe their parents or grandparents ended up within the fishing industry and in that they weren't prepared for the regulations and the changes. A lot of communities are, are facing the same problem today, not just here in Massachusetts, but across the country in that we have a changing um, outlook around housing, around what our future economy is, and we're trying to navigate our past with our future. And a lot of people, when they talk about gentrification, they, they kind of see it as either very positive or very negative. And in the case of Gloucester, for example, we're going through a pro process right now through our community development team where we're trying to introduce a housing production plan so that we can accommodate the best housing strategies going forward here. You know, it's, there's a lot of good potential here and a lot of people have to get involved to have their voices heard and they're doing that. So I, I feel confident that we're gonna have a very nice uh, game plan going forward here that's gonna return as much as it can for everyone so that um, it won't be overly developed and it won't be a relic of the past either. I think we're gonna find that right sweet spot by all working together. Everything that we're doing here is that the, the next generation is well equipped to come in when uh, she passes that baton over, or that generation passes that baton over. The mayor, she's my age, we went to school together. I first met her in seventh grade. Um, as local as local comes, you know, she's as Gloucester as Gloucester could possibly be. Very forward, always very a very talkative forward type. I mean, as I look back, I guess it makes sense that she has no problem getting up in front of people and talking, and she'll talk to, she'd talk to anybody at any moment. I wouldn't think she would care much whether you shoveled crap for a living or were a multi-zillionaire as far as how she treated you. I think she tries to treat everybody decently. Tough time to be a mayor, I guess, especially in her case where she grew up 
you know, Italian as Italian can be around the fish, all based around the fishing community. You know, so that to her, that's that's the way of life for Gloucester, and it is. It was. It was all. You know, all of us. I was. I mean, I, I wasn't in a fishing family, but my father was a longshoreman, so. Yeah, everything was still based around that. So for her to see it change, it's, it's going to be like, okay, I get it. It has to change, you know. Uh, but it can't be easy for her. She must pine for the old days in some ways. You know, she has to. Do you? Oh, I love it when you leave me. I love you more the days you don't. In the morning, will you forget me? For all the times I never spoke. Met this girl in the country. Her hair was black like summer feet. But now she's standing at that station. Outbound ticket track three. She says, Oh, I love it when you leave me. I love you more the days you don't. In the morning, you come with me. I hoped you would, but I bet you won't. So just don't take those eyes off me, baby. I don't feel like myself today. I play the blues in every station till my blues just wash away. By that time, oh, I'll be old and gray. <laughs>